Hello everyone, welcome back to Jus de Rose. Today's video is about new fragrance launches that I will be rating. I'm actually going to start a new series on my YouTube channel where on a monthly basis I will talk about new launches so that you are aware of the latest fragrance news. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. By far the most requested fragrance for me to review is the new Kaali scent Love Fest Burning Cherry. I have a little travel size here. I actually met with the brand a few weeks ago and they gave it to me and I got to discover all the Kaali scents so there'll be a brand review coming very soon but essentially this perfume is a cherry dominant scent and oh my gosh this smells so sexy so addictive I absolutely adore it and when I was trying all the Kaali fragrances I kept on being drawn to this scent like it has the most beautiful sillage like scent bubble and it just made the room smell really really good so to me this perfume is a really dark cherry scent imagine like like those dark cherries that would stain your fingers for days this is the kind of cherry that you get in this perfume and immediately right off the bat you get a spicy woody effect spicy smoky woody effect it is a really attractive perfume it's a type of scent that you want to smell over and over again now I'm sure a lot of you are gonna ask me what did this smell like compared to lost cherry by Tom Ford so lost cherry is heavier on the cherry much more intense and fruitier than Kaali's La Fest burning cherry so Tom Ford I would say is almost like a concentrated cherry juice extremely cherry and fruity and it also feels stronger so I tell tested both of the fragrances on tester strips but also on my skin and I could smell the Tom Ford fragrance stronger than I did the Kaali scent and actually the downside with this fragrance is its performance it projects really well for like an hour to an hour and a half or so but then only lasts around four hours which is really unfortunate because this fragrance smells super good so I wish it could last a little longer because of the performance that could be better but the fragrance is really good I'm gonna rate this fragrance a 7 out of 10. This next fragrance I'm super excited about because I loved it when I discovered it at Exence in Milan. It is Supermoon by Carner. So this fragrance is part of a new summer collection. It's like 30 ml bottles. Let me tell you right now, I was shocked because I don't like fruity fragrances usually and I was immediately drawn to this scent. Supermoon is a really fresh and uplifting red fruit scent. You have pomegranate, there's mandarin, some cassis as well. This is a perfume that I love to wear when it is so hot outside. It's a type of scent that is in a similar territory to Rouge Trafalgar by Dior, but I find that Supermoon smells so much better, at least on my skin. I prefer it. It's not gonna become like sickly berry sweet. It is really stunning and I wish that they made a bigger bottle of this because I'm obsessed. I'm really obsessed with this scent. It lasts for a really long time on my skin. It lasts around seven to eight hours, which for a fruity fragrance with some citruses is really good and it projects quite well for like the first two hours or so and then the projection is like moderate to soft afterwards. Really nice summer release, great for a hot day. I'm gonna rate this fragrance a nine out of 10. This next fragrance I also discovered at Essence and it is by one of my favorite niche brands, Atelier des Ors Riviera Sunrise. This perfume is an orange dominant fragrance. So if you like orange fragrances, this is going to be for you. To me, this is really like orange pulp. There's also some mandarin, some musks and light woods in the background, a touch of aromatic freshness with basil. It is on the sweeter side because of the orange, because of the mandarin, but it is still very refreshing and energizing. This scent is like a shot of vitamin C. That is how energizing and how much it will wake you up in the morning. Really enjoy this new release from Atelier des Ors. In terms of performance, on my skin it lasts around five hours with moderate to soft projection. So I'm gonna rate this fragrance an eight out of 10. Next up, we have Miss Dior Rose Essence. I bought this fragrance as a gift to myself for having reached the milestone of 100,000 subscribers. So thank you to all of you for supporting my channel. It makes me so happy and I just love creating fragrance content. So this was my little gift to myself. Miss Dior Rose Essence is a really bougie rose water scent. So dominant with rose water. You also have some woods with Gaillac wood, with vetiver, fresh, slightly citrusy and a touch spicy. Truly, this is the most luxurious rose water scent that I've ever smelled. I can smell the quality in this perfume. This is made of centifolia rose coming from Grasse, from Dior's rose field. So it is a very special fragrance and I can really appreciate 
the craftsmanship and the quality of the perfume oil in this scent. The problem I have with it is how expensive it is. I think it was like 136 pounds and this perfume is extremely light. It doesn't project like crazy and it doesn't last at all. It lasts only for a few hours. So it is on the pricier end. If you have some extra money to spend or if you wanna get yourself a special occasion fragrance and you love rose, then I invite you to try it. I don't regret my purchase at all. Like I'm extremely happy and I really enjoy wearing it. I just think it's a little bit pricey for what it is. But with that in mind, the scent profile is incredible. So I'm gonna rate this fragrance an eight out of 10. On extremely popular demand, I went out and tried Good Fortune, the new fragrance by Victor and Rolf. Now this perfume is a big deal because it is a brand new pillar and it's not like a flanker or a new addition to an already existing range. So Good Fortune, I mean this fragrance, can it be any more obvious at targeting Gen Z? Now what I like about this fragrance is that for once it's not an overly sickly sweet designer scent. In fact, it's not sweet at all. It's more within the floral musky territory. So there is fennel, jasmine, gentiana and vanilla I believe. It is a nice floral musky fragrance but frankly that's a little bit boring. It's not a fragrance that draws you in whether it's good or bad. It's just a little bit meh average and quite forgettable actually. So for me, this perfume is a pass. Next up, we have Rose de Grasse Joyful Bloom. This just launched also last week and I received the most beautiful mailer from the Erin team with like pink roses in it. I mean, it was so stunning. So is this fragrance on par with the presentation? So Joyful Bloom is a joyful interpretation of rose. The notes in this fragrance are Indian rose. There's also Centifolia rose, some Mandarin, and sandalwood. To me, this perfume is a fresh, floral, rosy, musky scent that is ethereal, delicate, and ultra feminine. One thing that I will say about Erin fragrances is that Erin is very good at making beautiful floral scents. That being said, Joyful Bloom. I'm a little bit disappointed with this fragrance. Not anything that is groundbreaking. I feel like this DNA has been done before. It's not anything that is outstanding. It smells good, but again, for the price point, I think there are some other fragrances that you can get that also have a similar DNA. And the performance, unfortunately, is on the lower end. On my skin, it lasts around four hours with a soft projection and say after like an hour or so, I can't really smell it, which is a shame. And I personally won't go out and buy this scent. So for me, this perfume is a pass, but I do invite you to discover other floral fragrances from Erin, such as Hibiscus Palm, because that scent is outstanding. Next up, we have Gucci Flora Gorgeous Jasmine. The packaging is so stunning. That's like the first thing that I saw in store. Now this scent itself, I found to be a little underwhelming. So it is a clean, fresh, soapy jasmine perfume. It is innocent, tender, and soft, as opposed to being like a sexy, vampy jasmine. So it plays more on like the ethereal and purity of jasmine as opposed to something that is super sexy and strong. I don't think I'm the right target audience personally for this fragrance. It's a little underwhelming and I would have liked to see something a little bit different from Gucci. I also prefer the Gucci Flora Gardenia over this one because Gucci Flora Gardenia is a little sweeter and creamier and this one is just too soapy and musky for my taste personally. So this fragrance for me is a pass. Next up, we have a fragrance that I wore nonstop during my trip in Tuscany. It is Liris by Santa Maria Novella. I went to the Santa Maria Novella boutique in Florence. It is so stunning and I smell all the fragrances and the one that I was drawn to the most was Liris. And again, this launched, I think at the beginning of summer. This fragrance, oh, is basically Italian classiness and sophistication in a bottle. This is the type of fragrance that I wanted to wear whilst I was visiting the cathedrals and the beautiful art of Florence. That is like, for me, the epitome of Italian class and sophistication. The iris is fresh, clean smelling, a little bit powdery. It's complemented with some orange blossom, some musk as well. And I like the fact that it is clean smelling. It has 
a clean, luxury, soapy feel about it, which is exactly what I wanted to smell like when it was super hot. It's not a perfume that projects like crazy, nor does it last forever, but it was perfect for that heat wave moment. So really, really love this fragrance. If you like Iris, I invite you to try this scent. So I'm gonna rate this fragrance a 8.5 out of 10. Next up, we have a new release from Paris. It is Neroli Mediterraneo. This fragrance is around a Neroli scent. This perfume is a crisp Neroli. It's almost a little bit leafy, like I picture this as being the Neroli tree with lots of leaves and then little Neroli flowers dotted around. So that is what I get from this scent. It has a bit of a bitterness. There's also some bitter orange. To me, this perfume has almost a traditional Eau de Cologne-like type of DNA. It is more masculine leaning, I will say, and it's a type of fragrance that I would picture men splash on after shaving, almost like an aftershave lotion, fresh aromatic citrus scent. I like Neroli's to be more musky, almost like soapy clean or alternatively on the sweeter side. I'm not particularly drawn to this fragrance as much as the other DNAs I just mentioned, so I'm gonna rate this perfume a 7 out of 10. Next up, we have a really exciting new collection release by The Merchant of Venice. It is Accordi di Profumo. So this collection is basically different accords or different notes. For example, you have tuberose, neroli, patchouli that are intended to be mixed together. So it's the whole concept of layering. And so I picked out the four that I liked the most. I also discovered these at Essence. So I have Tuberosa, Neroli, Tonka, and Sandalo. I'm gonna go quickly through each of these individually and then share my favorite layering combo. So the first one is Neroli Morocco. So very different to the Paris Neroli. This one is a juicy Neroli. I feel like it is embellished with a lot of citruses, maybe some mandarin for that like juicy sweetness. Very fresh and a soft, clean, soapy Neroli, I would say. If you like Neroli and you want something that is extremely invigorating and refreshing, Neroli Morocco is going to be for you. Next up, we have Tuberosa. I adore this fragrance because I love my white florals. To me, this perfume is a creamy tuberose, a fresh creamy tuberose to perfection. The closest fragrance that I can think of that resembles to this is Dosson by Diptyque. So if you like Dosson by Diptyque, Tuberosa is going to be right up your alley. Super nice and very easy to layer. Next up, we have Sandalo. This is a gorgeous sandalwood fragrance. If you are a fan of sandalwood, you need to get your nose on the scent. I would wear this fragrance on its own. It is so beautiful. And it is also my favorite out of the collection to layer with all the other notes because it just layers beautifully with everything. A creamy, velvety sandalwood. It is a touch sweet. There's a little bit of tonka as well in here that contributes to the milkiness of this perfume. And I think I'll be wearing this a lot in the autumn and winter because I like to wear woodier fragrances during the colder months. Fantastic sandalwood based perfume. And finally, we have tonka. Now this is a tonka bean perfume so very sweet. To me, this is more of like vanilla with a little bit of like tonka bean. So it's a mix between tonka bean and vanilla. If you want that added sweetness in your fragrance, then you can layer it with tonka. Now I'm gonna share with you my favorite combo, which is mixing sandalwood and tonka. These two fragrances are a killer and I know I'm gonna be wearing this a lot. So I first spray tonka onto my skin, I'm gonna show you with the blotter. I'll do like one or two sprays and I'll do the equal amount of sprays with Sandalo. So I'll just add one, two. The two is a match made in heaven. It is yummy, deliciously sweet, so addictive. The milkiness of sandalwood goes very well with the tonka, the almondy touch of tonka. These two fragrances are a killer combo. I highly recommend you try it if you love sweet scents. Next up, we have the new release from Amouage Royal Tobacco. The brand sent me this beautiful discovery kit, which contains the entire library collection and also the new fragrance. This discovery kit is incredible. I love the detailing on the travel sprays. It feels ultra luxurious and the spray quality is also amazing. Royal Tobacco is a celebration between frankincense and tobacco. It is unusual. This is not 
a tobacco fragrance that I've smelled before. For me, the tobacco is more of a tobacco leaf effect. Tobacco that would wrap around cigars. Like that is like the tobacco leaf all blended with lots of resins. There's some balmy nuances as well. Interestingly enough, I get a bit of a licorice effect in the dry down, which is surprising and different again for a tobacco fragrance. Now, I tested this fragrance on my skin and unfortunately it doesn't work for me. I get a lot of resins, a lot of the frankincense that comes out and I'm not typically drawn to these ingredients and I just don't like the way that this fragrance smells on my skin. That's not to say that you you may not enjoy it. For me, it just doesn't work because I'm not drawn to these ingredients. And actually, with Amouache fragrances, there's some that I absolutely love, and one of them is Material, and Cécile Zahokian also created Material and this fragrance. Absolutely adore it, but there's some fragrances that just don't work for me, and Royal Tobacco is one of them. But I do invite you to sample it if you are a fan of tobacco and rich resins and strong, powerful scents. This is a bold perfume. I would say more on the masculine side. So if you like bold fragrances and you want a twist on tobacco, check out Royal Tobacco. But again, for me, this is going to be a pass. Another bold fragrance is a new release from Maison Crivelli. It is currently exclusive to Galerie Lafayette and Selfridges, but I think it will launch globally in September. It is Ambre Chromatique. So this is a new uh, addition to the extra de Parfum collection. These beautiful red bottles. You also have Hibiscus Mahajad, Patchouli Magnétique. So this one is based around amber. And to me, this is not what I had expected from an amber scent. I would typically think of an amber perfume being sweet, very balmy and resinous. This one is a dance between hot and cold. So it has this like cooling effect, but at the same time it's warm because of the resins in the, in the background, if that makes sense. So I get a lot of incense, a lot of it, as well as pink pepper, which I find gives a coolness to the perfume. At the same time, you have the balmy resins and also vanilla in the base that will warm up the composition. It's slightly leathery, a little bit fruity as well, perhaps coming from the Osmanthus and Divana. Again, this is another one that doesn't work on my skin, which is hugely frustrating because it is a beautiful composition. To me, the incense is way too strong. It really comes out on my skin and I just don't like incense to be so intense. If you love incense, this is probably going to be for you, but for me, I like incense more in the background of fragrances. For me, in this perfume, it is front and center, which is why it doesn't work for me, but I would recommend you sample this fragrance. Maybe on the website you can get a sample, or just wait until September when it comes out, because it is definitely worth discovering. And the final fragrance is a brand new release from Nishane, Temp Fluo. So this is part of a entirely new collection that Nishane teased at Essence in Milan, and Temp Fluo I have to say is a standout in the collection. This perfume is the most unusual fragrance that I have in my collection. There is literally nothing else that smells like this. A floral amber composition with an addictive gourmand base. It has a hefty dose of saffron, so it's spicy. There's also some orange blossom and an addictive base of praline. This perfume is alien-like. Like, it feels like it's coming from another planet. I've never smelled anything like this before. It gives me the same impression when I wear it as Alien by Mugler does. It's like that kind of really empowering, bold fragrance that is super sexy, that oozes sex appeal. I don't know what it is, but it is extremely addictive, super long lasting and projects like crazy. On my skin, it lasts around 10 hours and the projection is strong throughout those 10 hours. A very nice new release from Nishane and I'm excited to wear a little bit more of this fragrance. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any of these fragrances. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching and remember, spread the fragrant love.